Good morning. Welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church on this special Sunday. We've had a lot of special Sundays lately. Uh, we've been busy around here with all those ancient rituals that Baptists do in their life together. But today, for Charlie Nagel's sake, is the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. He marks that off on his refrigerator at home, and he keeps close tabs on that, and he always lets me know if I'm wrong, off a date, here or there. Uh, but today is also a parent-child church dedication for Cora Lee, and we're so excited about that. And you'll get directions about what we're up to along the walls here in just a little bit. But this is, is an imagining for us. This is something that we've never done before, but that fits right in with who we are as Baptists. Um, incidentally, uh, parent church child dedication Sundays are risky business at First Baptist. I don't know if you know this or not, but they're risky. Uh, you see, every time we schedule one, uh, things just break. It just happens. We tried to dedicate Elliot three times now, and the third time that we put him on the calendar, he gave us hand, foot, and mouth. So Elliot, sitting down here in his cute little bow tie, flipping through the hymnal, uh, has yet to be dedicated. We tried to dedicate Micah more than once and finally got that done, and now it's Cora's day. Cora's day is here. Suzanne can't speak a word wherever she is. Uh, she can't talk. Uh, she lost her voice. And last night, Middlesbrough got hit with about five or six inches of rain. Uh, Christy and I were at the country club for the reverse raffle. We came the long way around, and we forded US 25E on the way home. Uh, water shooting up off of both sides of the truck. So when I tell you, Parent, church, child dedications are risky business around here. That's what I mean. But, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, we're going to have one here today in this service. So, hang on for that. Um, just a few announcements to make. Uh, this Wednesday night, the pastor's Bible study continues. We'll be looking at Hagar. Uh, Christy and I are co-teaching that. And then you have an insert in your bulletin. On one side, it, uh, it's a flyer introducing you to the new children's ministry program that the Children's Ministry Committee has started. Uh, you can get more information about that from Andrea Lee, who is the Children's Committee Chair, but it's called Whirl. I don't know why, but that's what it's called. And it sounds fun. Uh, maybe it's because children whirl. I don't know. But uh, that's, uh, that's it. Um, and the Bibles on the um, communion table today, one of them is the World Bible that matches this program that's uh, coming forward. Uh, then on the back of that same flyer, uh, this is an initiative from our um, Bible teaching program director or our Sunday school director, whichever you want to call her, uh, Sharon Birchfield. Uh, next Sunday morning, September the 17th at 10 o'clock in the chapel, we will be having soul food. What that means is we're inviting you to bring a breakfast dish to share, kind of a potluck breakfast thing, and uh, Charlie Jones is going to be offering a devotional in that uh, hour before worship. Food and food in that hour before. Um, if, if, you will, uh, if you will do that, bring a dish to share, a breakfast dish to share, show up, Charlie's preparing, uh, Sharon's preparing, and it should be a good time. 10 o'clock in the TEL Chapel. We're so excited, Sharon, that you came up with that good idea. That's it for announcements. Again, welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church. We're so glad you're here for this special day in the life of our congregation. Our 
hymn of praise this morning is hymn number 425, How Firm a Foundation, and it's a fitting one to start this Sunday of child church parent dedication. So would you stand, find hymn number 425, and let's join our voices together. profession of faith as a congregation and join your voices with Zach and I as we read the Apostles Creed together. And we will be reading it in unison, us and you all together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, you may be seated. And thank you for joining in that. Uh, that that uh, confession, the creed of the apostles, is one of the oldest creeds in Christian history. It dates all the way back to the early church. And Christians have been using it in worship for many, many, many centuries. And on this day, when we make covenant together, and when we make covenant with the Lees and God, it felt right to include this. Also, Ann Shoemate loves it because she's a former Presbyterian, so is Betty, and they love it because Presbyterians read this thing every Sunday in worship. So we use it 
from time to time uh, for all involved. Now, we come to the moment of fun here. Uh, what is this? Oh, I'm being loaded up. All right. Or, Cora, will you come with me? Yeah. Will you come with me? Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi there. Look at all these people. This is your Sunday school teacher. Look at him. He's going to have you for a while. Here, get that out of there so they can take your picture. <laughs> you know these people. Yeah. No? Stay here. Stay here. It's okay. It's okay. And you know these people too. There's your brother. There he is. And family. Yeah. And look, this is Eric. Eric's in charge of CCM, which means the whole town's mad at him about every other week. Yeah. But he takes it well, and one of these days you'll be able to volunteer with him down there. A high five. Can you give Eric a high five? That's important. Yeah. This is James Carl Shoemate. I don't know what good he is to you, but there he is. And will be a lot more helpful. Yeah. And Deborah... And Sharon and Trish, you know Trish, yeah, yeah. And look at this row back here. There's Patty, and look at this row. He's even less good to you than James Carl. But Miss Sharon was going to help you. She'd been painting, well, Charlie's been painting up there. But Miss Sharon's been decorating your Sunday school room. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, she's getting ready for you, and these people down here love you, and they'll probably watch you from time to time if you ask them. They'll play with you. Is that fun? That's fun, isn't it? And then over there is Doodlehead. That's his real name. You see, when he joined the church, we gave him a new name. That's him. And he'll make sure you get a bulletin and anything else at the door. Yeah. Over on that corner there is Charlie. Charlie can teach you all kinds of good things, but we won't go into those this morning. Uh, and then all the way back here, this is Mr. Trent. See him? Yeah, he's waving at you. And these two will love you. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they'll love you. And these people over here will love you. Yeah. And these two will love you. Miss Jenny will give you all the sweets you want. She'll give you a bunch of toys your parents don't want you to have. And she'll keep you up way past your bedtime. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Who said church wasn't fun? Here's Stan and Thornley. They're always here. And, and Mamma and Susan. Yep. There they are. And, and these two lovely people, they've got grandkids and they're busy, but they love you. They sure do. Yeah. You've done such a good job. There's Peggy over there. Welcome her back. Hi, Peg. Yeah. You've done such a good job. I really thought you were going to cry. You want some candy? Here's some candy. Yeah. Yeah, there's some candy. Take it all. Take it all. Here, I'm going to hand you to your parents and let them come down and stand up here with Micah. Yeah, come on down. And, uh, oh, there's Christy. Let's see. All right, so First Baptist Church, look at this lovely family. Look at this lovely family. We have done this before with them. It took three tries, but we did this with Micah. And it's taken two tries, but we've done it with Cora now. And we are so, so delighted to call you part of our church. We love you all. We pray for you all. All of those things. Uh, is that not true? Can you say amen if that's true? 
Can you say amen if you'll covenant today to pray for this family? Can you say amen if Cora is the cutest little girl you've ever seen? Yeah, that one was hardy. Can you say amen if you will promise to walk with them and to raise these kids up in the way they should go in the Christian faith here at First Baptist Church? Can you say amen to that? Well, good. I'm so glad. And you all, can you say amen to letting them help you? I know that's hard. I know that's hard as parents. I get it. I get it. But, but amen. And can you say amen to raising these kids up in the way they should go in their lives? And can you say amen if you accept and receive the love of all these people who are sitting here with all these wonderful smiles on their face? Amen. Amen. Oh, and I guess you should turn around and do it for the choir, too. <laughs> all right. Um, well, you all uh, stay right here. Christy, um, come on up. All right, I'm going to explain it. This is the fun part, folks. We've never done anything quite like this before, but I trust that you can handle it. Around the wall are all these pieces of cloth hanging, and they've got cardstock behind them so that you don't leave a mark on the wall. Make sure you hit the, pad, the, the cloth when you go up. What we're doing here today is we're asking for you, the congregation, or at least one part of your family unit, to go up to one of these plates. Um, before you do anything with the paint, write your name on the piece of paper underneath of the cloth laying there. Write your name, then take the little brush and put paint on one of your hands. Now, I know that's scary, I know, but you can do it, I promise. You did it in VBS years ago. And then with that painted hand, put a, put a handprint on that piece of cloth. Um, and, and then, yes, yes, there are wet wipes everywhere for you to get the paint back off. So you can wipe the paint off and then put the wet wipe. Isn't she just like a flight attendant? Isn't that great? <laughs> Now, when you sit down, make sure you buckle your seatbelt and pull it across. <laughs> the reason we're doing this is because Baptists lay on hands. That's, what, that's one of the things we do. And in this flu season and everything else, we're not going to come up and put our hands all over Cora. So instead... We're going to lay hands on all the way around the room in such a way that years from now, Cora will still have your hands to love and cherish forever. So that's what your assignment is. Please do that until all the, the, the cloths are covered as Christy uh, plays some music. And you all get to go to the communion table and do this. to your 
children playing. Grant us joy, help us grow and offer grace. And Lord, listen to your children.
you want to find this hymn in your hymnal to sing along, it's hymn number 389, Lord, Listen to Your Children Praying. Lord, listen to your children praying. Well, I have to say that I'm proud of all of you. You did just fine. And look how colorful the room and the wall and the radiators and your clothes are now. Don't you feel like you've been to VBS today? Yes, indeed. Today's first lesson comes from the book of Isaiah. And it is a passage of scripture that you will recognize from the recesses of your memory. And it is the passage of scripture from which we take the title that we print in the bulletin for the children's sermon every week. Right there. This is that passage from the book of Isaiah. A shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from its roots. The Lord's Spirit will rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of planning and strength, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. He will delight in fearing the Lord. He won't judge by appearances nor decide by hearsay. He will judge the needy with righteousness and decide with equity For those who suffer in the land, he will strike the violent with the rod of his mouth. By the breath of his lips, he will kill the wicked. Righteousness will be the belt around his hips and faithfulness the belt around his waist. The wolf will lie down with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the young goat. The calf and the young lion will feed together. And, and a little child shall lead them. Here ends the first lesson. I'd like to ask all our young friends who waited so patiently to come on down front. All right, have a seat right there on the stairs. I'm going to grab my Bible here. You can bring giraffe, yep. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll sit right here. Elliot, can you sit down? Can you sit down, bud? Sit right here. Can you sit right next to Cora? Good job. All right. Okay, everyone, I want you to look at me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you from the Bible. I'm going to read a little Bible story for you. Do you, like my, do you like my new Bible? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to... Let me get to my page here. What? Oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah, you're right. It's upside down. Oh, my goodness, I made a little mistake. I can't read it upside down, can I? No. No. That's right. We got to turn it right side up. That was a little mistake. That would have made it hard to read my Bible story. So I'm going to read this Bible story now that you guys helped me fix my little mistake. It's about Jesus welcoming children. 
guess what happened? The disciples were trying to listen to Jesus, but they couldn't hear what he was saying. There were so many children laughing and talking. We don't know what that's like. I imagine there was dancing too. Small children, tall children, some walking, some crawling. There were children everywhere. Jesus, one parent called out, please bless my child. My daughter is sick, another said. Lay your hands on her. Please heal her. The disciples pushed closer to Jesus. They shouted at the parents, take those noisy children away. Jesus is trying to teach grown-ups. He's too busy to talk with children. What do you think? How do you think Jesus felt about that? Sad. Sad, that's right. Everybody turned to look because you know what Jesus said? He said, stop. (gasps) And the disciples stopped shouting, and the parents stopped calling out, and the children even stood still for the briefest moments of time. And there's the miracle, folks. And everyone turned to look at Jesus. And you know what he said? He said, let the children come to me. Children love and share with all people. You can learn, grown-ups, from a child how to be a part of God's kingdom. And Jesus laid his hands on the children and hugged them and blessed them. So I made a little mistake when I tried to read that Bible story, right? What, what was my mistake? I accidentally held it upside down. Did the disciples make a little mistake in our Bible story? Yeah. Yeah, I had to turn it around. What was the disciples' mistake? They were shouting to not let the children come see Jesus. And did Jesus fix that mistake? He sure did. Because guess what? I bet you guys know, you know how Jesus feels about children, don't you? How does Jesus feel about children? Happy! Because Jesus loves all of us like children, including each of you as children. And what we just did with Cora and her family is a way that we show everyone how much we love children just like Jesus did. Did you all know that you're an important part of this church? No? No? Well, you are. And we all love you, and just like we promised to do with Cora, we are going to make sure we don't make the same mistake as the disciples and that we always let the children come, even when there's dancing and smarties and yelling and talking and all kinds of things going on. It's okay, because we love you, and more importantly, Jesus loves you. Okay? So can you guys say a quick prayer with me? You're going to repeat after me? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving children. Help us to love all ages of people especially children. In Jesus' name, amen. Good job. You all can go with Big Kev and Miss Tracy. Thanks. Mercy. You know, for a guy who was baptized as an infant in the Roman Catholic Church and then became a Baptist, he's starting to look like a Pentecostal, isn't he? (laughs) Amen. All right. All right. Let's pray together. All loving God, God who loves all of us and all of who we are. God, be with us in this place today. Bless us in this place today. 
be especially with the families, uh, the family of the Lees and their uh, friends and their family, and be with us as we are with them. Bless this child, the parents that raise her, and all that are connected to her on this most special day. God, we come here today to worship, to hear your words sung and read and preached and even lived out a little bit with paint and paper plates and pieces of cloth and paint on the walls. Isn't that the way it goes in life? And yet, God, you welcome us in. You embrace us in this space. You bless us here in our joys, in our hardships, in all of who we are. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for these blessings that you give us again this day in this place. God, in response, we want to pray. Pray the way that Jesus teaches his disciples to pray. And so we lift our voices in one bold church voice and we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel according to Mark. People were bringing children to Jesus so that he would bless them, but the disciples scolded them. When Jesus saw this, he grew angry and said to them, allow the children to come to me. Don't forbid them because God's kingdom belongs to people like these children. I assure you that whoever doesn't welcome God's kingdom like a child will never enter it. Then he hugged the children and blessed them. The word of the Lord. Our hymn of stewardship this morning reminds us of our childhood faith. Would you find hymn 603 in your hymnal and join our voices together in singing verses 1, 2, and 4 of Jesus Loves Me.
Rituals in worship take a little longer than usual, and yet, didn't you have fun? Didn't you have fun? I did. I had fun watching you have fun. I had fun when Betty Nagel said, we need a flight attendant over here, <laughs> and it was Cindy's fault. <laughs> that was fun. The laying on of hands, folks, the laying on the ha of hands is a Christian thing to do. In Roman Catholic and Episcopal churches, new ministers are ordained to their sacred calling when the bishop lays hands on their head and blesses them to set them apart for gospel work. The bishop is the head of the diocese and the supervisor of all the ministers in that diocese region. The laying on of hands is a Christian thing to do. In Presbyterian and many other Reformed Christian churches, new ministers are ordained to their sacred calling when the presbytery lays hands their hands on the heads and blesses them to the work of the gospel ministry. A presbytery is a group of ministers of churches affiliated together in an area, a region, a county, a state. These ministers are representatives of their congregations to the presbytery. And the presbytery itself is the head of that area. The laying on of hands is a Christian thing to do. In Baptist churches, in Congregationalist churches, new ministers are ordained to their sacred calling when the congregation lays their hands on their heads and blesses them and sets them apart for gospel work. I'm repeating myself because I want you to hear how similar it is even as it's different. Laying on of hands, setting apart. There is no diocese in Baptist life. There are no presbyteries in Baptist life. Some say we're crazy for that. There are only associations, and associations have no governing authority over congregations whatsoever. Well, they're not supposed to anyway, right? Each congregation is autonomous, and each congregation is its own head over its own little place in the world. Now, a helpful but imperfect analogy, don't carry this too far, you'll distort it, but a helpful analogy is this, Catholic and Episcopal polity are monarchical, monarchy. Presbyterian and Reformed polity is Republican, not capital R, we're not talking about the GOP here. It's Republican. It is representative democracy. Baptist and congregational polity is direct democracy. When I tell my Presbyterian friends that if we were to change the carpet in this room, it would take a congregational vote, they say, what in the world is wrong with you people? Don't you know that that's a third rail? Yeah, yeah, that's the way we do it, though. And sometimes I say the same thing when they tell me stories from their churches. For some of you, the introduction I just offered was riveting. I know that some of you thought that was great, and I know that others of you blacked out around the time I said diocese, which was in the first paragraph. For what it's worth, that's one of the burdens of preaching. No sermon will ever scratch the itch of every listener in the room every time. It just doesn't work. In fact, Fred Craddock used to say that, uh, that pastors who give the congregation a dazzling sermon every week do the congregation an injustice because life's not always dazzling. 
And what dazzles one listener doesn't dazzle a different one. So it is, so it has been, so it will always be. But I open today with this brief little piece about different traditions because we've been busy at this church lately. We have been so busy in these ordinances, these rites that we have as Baptists. A couple of weeks ago, we baptized Ethan Shoemate. Last week, we gathered around this table at Christ's invitation, and we shared communion among one another. This week, we've gathered to dedicate and celebrate one of the little ones in our midst. Frankly, in three weeks' time, this particular Baptist congregation has been around the world and back. You have. That's all we got. We threw out the rest of the stuff when we fell out with the Episcopalians in England. All that we have left, you've done it all in three weeks. If you want to add to it, well, four weeks ago, you celebrated a 10th anniversary of a pastor. That was a thing, a big thing. And pretty soon, you're going to lay on hands again and ordain deacons. Sarah Osmus, Claudia Jarvis, and Ann Shumate. Yeah, you all have been busy. You all have been around the world and back. Some of you leaned in as I opened the sermon with a lesson in congregational governance. Some of you leaned back and stared at the chandelier while I was giving that lesson. But given all the living that we've done around here these days, it felt like it was important to put it out there. Now, let's run the thread back through the eye that we started with. The laying on of hands is a Christian thing to do. I don't care what kind of Christian it is, it's a Christian thing to do. In a Baptist church, it's you, all of you gathered, all of you that directly lay on hands. We refer to this as the priesthood of the believer. I'm not your priest, I'm your pastor. And there's a difference. We are all priests. We are all charged with being the presence of Christ in the world here in Baptist land. Other Protestants, like Presbyterians, do hold to the priesthood of believers' idea, but we Baptists take it all the way to its end. I mean, we go all the way, as far as you can go with it. Anybody, anybody can baptize somebody, Anybody can serve communion. Anybody can dedicate. Anybody can ordain. We go all the way to the end. When I tell my Presbyterian friends that down at Columbia Seminary, they go, are you crazy? And maybe we are. I don't know. But sometimes they tell me stuff, and I'm like, are you nuts? Is that how you do it? Ann and Betty would know well about these kinds of things. I personally have lived on both sides of this fence. I brought today something that's very precious to me that I want to show you. Uh, this is a pair of knickers. I said it in an old English way. That's what it is, you know, you can see, right? And, uh, and this right here, is an alb. You see that? See how small it is? It's got a Cairo in the front of it, hand stitched. And this right here is a little bib that goes over top of that. And it's got a cross on it with a candle and water. And it says, I baptize you on it. And you see how little it is? Yeah. And, and this right here, this other piece right here is a stove. It's a white stove. 
it has a dove on it. It's made out of felt, a dove and a cross and tongues of fire. Do you know what this is? This is my baptism. This is what was put on me in the Roman Catholic Church the day that I was baptized. Really little. This is what the priest wore that day 38 years ago when he poured water over my little bitty face <laughs> and tried not to get it in my nose. This was there that day when my family and my friends and my godparents named all their hopes and fears and their dreams and baptized me into Christian faith. Now, we Baptists don't baptize infants. We never have. I think you can say that universally about Baptist, and there's not much you can say universally about Baptist. But we've never done this. You see, we fell out with the Church of England, and we threw out all the stuff, and then we said, you know, we're for believers baptism, and you got to be old enough to name your belief to get baptized as a believer. And then we started to miss it. I, this is my theory anyway. We started to miss it. We noticed that there was a hole in our practice, that babies and little children would come in to worship, and we had nothing for them because we didn't do this. So dedications were born. In a dedication in a Baptist church, you do almost exactly the same thing that you do in a Catholic infant baptism, less the water and less the priest's blessing. You gather around, you celebrate the new life, you smile, you play a little bit, you name your hopes and your fears for all the years, as the old Christmas carol says, and you covenant together to be church to the little one. It's almost the same thing, but we do it just a little different way. 38 years ago, I was small enough to fit in all this stuff, and the priest poured water over my little bitty face with this on. I couldn't help but think of all that today as we brought little Cora forward to uh, dedicate her, to name our hopes, to name our commitment to her. And here's the other thing about this. Though I have these things, I don't remember it. How could I remember it? You know, I was so little. These fit me back then. Right? Could have given them to Ethan Shoemate when he asked me if uh, he had to be naked under the baptism robe a couple weeks ago, and I said, yeah, it's required. But I don't remember it. I can't possibly remember it. And Cora won't remember it either. She's too little. She can't possibly remember this day. But because mom saved these things for me through my infancy, through my childhood, through my adolescence, because she saved these for me and gave them to me in my adulthood, I get to touch that event that blessed my life so long ago. It's all this that inspired this idea. You see, Cora, she won't remember it. How could she? But mom will keep these things for her 
through her toddlerhood, through her childhood, through her adolescence when she doesn't care about any of it and she's in her full rebellion. And then one day, when she's an adult and can appreciate it, she'll be given these things. And though she doesn't remember this moment, she will be blessed by the church that laid its hands on her this day. Named all that love for her and her family. Said, we'll be there for you. She will be blessed by the laying on of hands because the laying on of hands, well, it's a very Christian thing to do. Thanks be to God for you all for doing this this day. One day, years from now, Cora might be holding up these little handprints and saying, once upon a time, I was blessed by Ann and Trish and Doodlehead and Eric and Betty and these people that called themselves First Baptist Church. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of response this morning is a perfect way to go from this place, remembering the threads that tie us all together. Would you find hymn 267, Blessed Be the Tie, and join our voices together in verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> As you prepare to go from this place on this joyful day, there is a children's Bible like that one in the foyer. There's a pen out there. If Dwayne didn't get you to sign it on the way in, please sign it on the way out. Write a blessing for Cora and sign your name in it because it's hers from the church on this special day. Now, as you prepare to go, receive this blessing. May the strength of Christ uplift you. The comfort of the Holy Spirit surrounds you, and the grace and mercy of God give you hope and give you courage today and every day as you go in peace. Amen.
Thank you.